so recently I've seen a number of questions as it relates to submodels in XLite. So I wanted to take a minute and just kind of do a, a quick tutorial walkthrough on submodels, how they work, and how they set them up. But before I do that, I just want to take a quick shout out for the XLite's team and I'll remind everyone that they work extremely hard for all of us and they do it for free to give us an amazing piece of software. If you go to xlights.org, there is a donate button. Please take a minute, donate $5, donate $10, because their work is appreciated and it supports all of us in the lighting community. So done with my service, my public service announcement, and let's go back to XLights and do some submodeling. So right here I have my new star for my tree. Um, I actually haven't submodeled it yet. I've always intended to, and what better time than right now on this video. So if you select any prop within XLights, you have an option over here called submodels. But before I go there, I want to show you something else. If you right click, you have this option, it's called node layout. This is very beneficial for any prop that you have to be able to have an understanding of perspective on how X lights actually sees all of your lights and how I hope they're actually on your prop. In this particular situation, it's a six point star. So the star has uh, six layers in it starting with 20, then 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 pixels. So the first inner star is 20. Here's node 1, node 20. The next one starts at 21, ends at 50, so on and so forth. This is actually a great tool to help you understand, you know, how, am I, how do I really want to submodel it? Which lights do I really want to turn on and where are they actually at? Knowing that, let's go ahead and go into the submodel itself. Let me go ahead and move this up here and blow it up. So in here, I actually, you know, it's blank. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and click Add. And I'm going to say star 1. And I'm going to use star 1 through star 6 to represent the innermost star to the outermost star. So star 1. And that, as you saw in the node layout, is 20 pixels. So 1 to 20. And if I click away, you'll notice that that lights up. So here you have an option to add row. What that'll do is add another line down here so that you can pick additional pixels. All of those pixels will be part of that individual submodel. Unlike when you do strings as far as a regular props concerned, you can't individually go down to that level, and which I'll show later. So let's go ahead and move forward and add the rest of the stars. So we're going to add star 2, and that starts at 21 and goes to 50, and you see that it lights up. Let's add star 3, that starts at 51 and goes to 90, and you see that star lights up. Let's go to star 4, that starts at 91 and goes to 140. And you see that one lights up. Let's add star 5. And that's at 141 and goes to 200. And you see that one lights up. And last but not least, let's add the most outer star, which is star 6. And that one starts at 201 and goes to 270. And the outermost one lights up. So let's go ahead and click OK and then of course save. And now I've defined all the submodels for my star. The next step you know, in the progression of it is obviously going ahead and sequencing against it. So I've set up this blank sequence, which is to be able to kind of represent how this works. So you'll see here I have my megatree star. If I go ahead and double click on it, I get all the strands that are defined and I get all of my submodels. So if I wanted, I could go ahead and add a, an effect against the inner star. I can add another effect against the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one, and then the outermost. And if I play the sequence, you'll see that it traverses through them. If I wanted to have a chase effect, for example, I can go ahead and take star one, keep it on all the time, all the way through, all the way through, 
all the way through. And if I play it, you'll see that it starts to grow. So I hope this gives you an idea of how you can use submodels within your display and set them up. Another just quick thing, you'll notice if I double click on any of the submodels, not that you can see me clicking, but it doesn't do anything. So again, back to what I was saying when you were setting up the submodels, the lines really don't mean anything as far as like the strands are concerned. They're just part of that original submodel. I hope you find this beneficial and have a great day.